Hello everyone. Welcome to the Mechanical Studies. In this video, we will study various aspects of thermodynamic process and cycle. First, we will go through system properties since those are used as coordinates while plotting a process. These properties are nothing but certain observable parameters which identify state of the system. For example, if we consider here a water inside the bucket as a system, then the condition of the system that is water here, whether it is hot or cold can be specified by its temperature. Thus, all such parameters like mass, pressure, volume, temperature, enthalpy, internal energy, entropy and so on serve as properties of the system. Now these properties are of two types. First one is extensive properties which depend on the size or extent of the system like total mass, total volume, total momentum etc. And second one is intensive properties which are independent of the mass of the system like pressure, temperature, density and specific properties like specific enthalpy, specific entropy etc. Okay. Now remember here the ratio of any extensive property to mass of the system becomes average specific value and hence it is an intensive property. For example, specific volume is an intensive property which is the ratio of total volume to the mass of the system or another example is specific enthalpy which is again an intensive property and it is the ratio of total enthalpy to the mass of the system. Okay. Now after discussing system properties, we will go to thermodynamic process. We know a system undergoes a thermodynamic change, thus any change that a system undergoes from one equilibrium state to another is called a thermodynamic process or simply a process. Now in this study, we describe this change on property plots with the help of system properties. Thus a process can be again defined as the path of successive states through which system changes from one equilibrium state to another. For example, let's consider here compression process of gas enclosed in piston cylinder device. Here a fixed mass of gas enclosed in cylinder is actually a system whose initial and final states are 1 and 2 and those can be represented with the help of properties pressure and volume on property plots as P1 V1 here it is P1 V1 and P2 V2 pressure P2 and volume V2. Thus here the path of successive states followed by a system during its change from one equilibrium state to another can be called as process. Now see all actual processes are very difficult to analyze since in this case only initial and final state are at equilibrium. Therefore these actual processes are modeled and analyzed as quasi static process. A quasi static process or also called as quasi equilibrium process is the process in which all intermediate states remain infinitesimally close to an equilibrium. So don't forget here important point that quasi static process is not a true representation of actual process whereas it is an idealized process which is being a standard to which an actual process is compared. Okay. This is being done because of two reasons. First one is quasi static process is easy to analyze and second is work producing device deliver most of the work when operated in quasi static manner. For a process to be quasi static, it has to be carried out very slowly. That means Infinite slowness is a characteristic feature of quasi-static 
process. Now, one important term is here that we must not skip, which is a reversible process. Reversible process is the process through which system can be restored back to the initial state following the same path without affecting the surrounding, without affecting surrounding. These are very important words from this definition. Without these words, the definition of reversible process has no sense. Reversible process is impossible to achieve in reality. And I will tell you why with a simple example here. Let's consider water flowing through pipe connected to two tanks, tank A and tank B separated by elevation difference here. So here water will easily and by default flow from tank A to tank B because of elevation difference, which is a natural process. Now the question comes, can we make this process reverse? One can say definitely we can do this task with the help of pump here that lifts the water from tank B to tank A through same pipe. So can we say this reversible process? The answer is no, we cannot say this reversible process and I will tell you why. If we look at the system here, the system comprises of tank A, tank B and the pipe connected between these two tanks. Okay. Anything outside of this system will be surrounding here. Okay. And in order to perform the task to this pump, we must supply energy to this pump from outside, obviously from the surrounding. And this is why the surrounding is getting disturbed here. Okay. And that's why as per the definition, we cannot say this as a reversible process. It's a irreversible process. In fact, all the processes are irreversible in nature. Various factors causing the process to be irreversible are called irreversibility. And these factors are like elevation difference, potential difference, finite temperature difference, magnetic hysteresis, fluid friction, static friction, etc, etc. Okay. Now, these irreversibilities are always present there in a system and we cannot completely remove these irreversibilities from the system. And that is why all the process are irreversible in nature. It is very difficult, rather impossible to create a reversible process. We will go now to the next term that is thermodynamic cycle. And we can say a system undergoes a cycle when number of processes are performed on it in such a way that the final state is identical with initial state. Thus, at the end of the cycle, system is restored to its initial condition. For example, here the system undergoes a thermodynamic cycle with two processes with different paths. Let us say path A and path B. Thus, the two processes, those are comprising cycle here, will be represented as 1A2 and second process from 2 to 1 through B that will be represented as 2B1. Okay. Whereas the entire cycle can be represented as 1A2B1. Okay. So you can see here the system comes back to its initial condition that is 1. In this subject, you will come across various thermodynamic cycles and their corresponding property plots. That's why it is very much essential to understand the properties and their application in describing process as well as cycle. I will summarize this discussion here with an example of diesel cycle where we can see how the properties are used to describe processes and cycle. These are pressure volume and temperature entropy plots of diesel cycle that consist of four processes. First process 1 to 2 that is isentropic 
compression of air second process 2 to 3 that is constant pressure heat addition third process that is 3 to 4 which is isentropic expansion of air and the last process 4 to 1 through which system comes to its initial condition 1 which is a constant volume heat rejection in this way we have studied here system properties and their applications in describing processes as well as cycle also we have discussed various aspects important aspects of thermodynamic processes here thank you